Let's look at technical analysis. Technical analysis. So technical analysis is looking purely at the price history of an asset to find patterns and correlations that let you predict the future price. So of course this is not possible, but people do it anyway. So technical analysis is really in contrast to fundamental analysis. So fundamental analysis is looking at the fundamentals of a company like the economic situation, trade between nations, you know, other specific factors like that, and coming up with a value of a company based on these, these fundamental factors. Technical analysis ignores all that. It just looks at the history of the price and tries to predict the future using the history of the price. So let's draw some graphs. So here's a chart of the asset price over time. So suppose it goes something like this. So if you connect together the peaks here, so the point here, 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 you can see it's forming a line. And the troughs here, here, it's forming another line. And these are called trend lines. So if you connect peaks and troughs, you get trend lines. And the idea is if the trend continues, you can expect the stock price to stay between these lines. And once the trend stops, it'll you know go off somewhere else. Let's do another one. So what if the stock looked like this? to make this bigger. So if you see something like this, you might say that there is resistance at these levels. It seems like the stock doesn't want to go higher than these, these points. And then similarly down here, you'd call this the support. It seems like there's force supporting the stock and it doesn't want to break below that. So these resistance and support levels, you know, at, while they hold, there'll be a, a constant price level that the, the stock can't go above or below. And once it does go above or below, it usually is said to go dramatically higher or dramatically lower to break through the support or to break, break through the resistance. All right, what's another technique? So here's our, our stock price. Now you can do a moving average. So suppose you take the last five data points, the five last five prices and do an average of those five numbers. And then every day you update that. That'll be your moving average. And the idea is to smooth out the, the bumps in the stock. So this could be your five day moving average. You can also imagine doing a 20 day average. So that'll smooth out even more. So this could be the 20 day average. And then these points where the, aver the moving averages intersect, you can imagine there's something interesting going on there. And so where these, where these lines intersect, maybe you buy or sell or you know, something's happening. The, the short-term trend and the long-term trend are diverging. So that's sort of interesting. So another way to think about stock prices is to do microstructure modeling. So market microstructure is the actual consequences of people buying and selling the stock, moving the price up and down in, in discrete events. And modeling the microstructure or simulating the microstructure is, is an idea to use a computer program and see what happens if you had a whole bunch of traders with different uh, strategies. And so what kind of strategies could you have? 
you might have noise traders. And so noise traders randomly buy and sell. They flip a coin and they, they just use the coin flip to determine if they're buying or selling. There's, there's no information in, in what they're doing. You might simulate some value traders. So value traders might have some threshold T. So if the asset is below T, they buy. If the asset is above T, then they sell. So they're trying to buy low and sell high. They have some idea of how much they think the asset is worth, which is T here. And they're buying and selling based on how the market uh, responds. You could also have trend followers. So the trend followers might do a moving average and buy if going up, sell if going down. So they're doing a moving average to get the, the trend. They don't want to follow a daily trend. They, they want to get you know slightly longer term, but not too much longer term. And if they see the trend going up, they'll start piling on and all buy. And if they see the stock going down, they'll all start selling. And so what you do is you, you simulate a whole bunch of, of traders of different types and you see what happens and you, you model all the different demands. So all these people are buying and selling based on their own little strategies. And from that, from the buy and, buy and sell orders that you simulate, you can simulate the effect on the price every day. And by doing this a lot, you can come up with conclusions about you know if there's mostly trend followers what do the prices look like if mostly people are value traders then what happens to the price and you can come up with conclusions like um, if you're a trend follower The conclusion you, you see is if you're a trend follower, the more people that follow the same trend, the more money you lose. So the more people following the same trend, the more money you lose. And so this is, this is a conclusion you come to by doing the simulation and seeing that you, you know, you can you can simulate all the details and you can see that if there are a lot of people following the same trend, they're all losing a lot of money because they're pushing the stock up and then it's going down and then they're selling and they're they're doing the opposite of the value traders, basically. So this is cool stuff. So does this actually work? Can you do technical analysis and predict the future or microstructure modeling and, you know, get one step ahead of the market? Eh, maybe, probably not. It's fun stuff to think about, though.